Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel and I'm a professor of migration studies. I'm excited to have a special guest here with me today, Professor Heim de Haas, who is a professor here at Maastricht University and the United Nations University Merit, as well as at the University of Amsterdam. So Hein, one of the big things that we're discussing today are a lot of international organizations and others are discussing uh, is of course climate change and also how climate change relates to migration. Um, I know you have some uh, very specific also opinions about this and how um, migration is currently being used in this climate change discussion. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, climate change is a very serious issue and I just want to say this very upfront. So mm -hmm. anything of what I'm saying is not to try to dismiss the seriousness of the issue that humanity is facing and the risk, serious risk is taken for the future in terms of particular global warming. Yeah. However, to make the link with mass migration is simply being right for the wrong reasons. Because there is so much evidence uh, already collected on, for instance, how environmental factors affect migration and environmental change affects migration mm -hmm. that doesn't really give reason to expect climate change to lead to massive international migrations. Mm -hmm. So that is the basic issue. Because the, first of all the links are very complex. Yes. I can give you an example. In the past uh, some uh, scholars have argued, like Norman Myers, that hundreds of millions of people would get on the move because of sea level rise. Mm -hmm. It makes a simple assumption that all the areas that may be submerged because of sea level rise will generate massive outmigration, that all these people living in those areas will move out. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, this is a very long-term process. Sea level rise is highly problematic. But you cannot just simply assume that all these people will move out, certainly not that all these people will move out over international borders. So it's making a very simplistic, deterministic link between climate change related uh, changes in the environment, like sea level rise, and the out movement of people. Another example I can give mm -hmm. is uh, the idea that climate change and global warming may lead to changes in weather, weather patterns and climates in particular parts of the world. Mm -hmm. For instance, some climate models predicted in parts of sub-Saharan Africa the, uh, increase of, there will be an increased incidence of drought, for instance. Mm -hmm. Again, the assumption is being made if you have more droughts, environmental stress, it will generate huge waves of international outmigration. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, we have quite some evidence on the effects of drought. This is not necessarily on climate change, but mm -hmm. there have always been droughts in many parts of Sub-Saharan Africa on mobility. Now that research shows that there's a very complex and indirect link, because you cannot just assume because it's a dry year people move out, because often people have other resources, not just agriculture. Yeah. But even when you look at small peasants who really rely on agriculture, like subsistence agriculture, the effects can be paradoxical. There's quite some evidence from different parts of Sub-Saharan Africa that show that a spell of drought can actually decrease long-term mobility mm -hmm. because people don't have the resources to move over long distances. Yeah. And families who plan to migrate to the cities who are abroad may actually do so in times of abundant rainfall because then they have the resources to pay for it. Yeah. And we also know that when people are facing immediate concerns mm -hmm. in terms of environmental stress, that they tend to move over short distances and tend to return as soon as it's over. We've yeah. seen the same with flooding, that during regular flooding in areas, delta areas of the world, like in Bangladesh, for instance, people move out but return as soon as possible because that's where the fertile soils are and that's where they want to live. So we see a lot of phenomenon that sort of defy this idea. And the last example I could give is the fact that the poorest of the poorest and the most vulnerable populations will be not the ones migrating. Yeah. When Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, most people who died were poor people, often African-American, without cars. Yeah. Because they lacked the financial capital, the means of transport and the social context to flee the city. And they also happened to live in the most vulnerable parts in the city of the city in terms of flooding. Yeah. So we see that vulnerability is an issue. Mm -hmm. So we cannot just assume that we will have these massive waves of out-migration. And the last important issue is that a lot of narratives that governments these days spin around climate migration is an attempt to depoliticize vulnerability of people. Mm -hmm. And what I mean with it is that yes of course it's, it's a big concern if there will be an increase in flooding in areas of the world, increasing incidence of hurricanes, that's what many climate scientists argue, 
and sea level rise are issues of serious concern, but the real issue is that governments often revert to blaming the climate instead of focusing on what they can do to make populations less vulnerable to climate change. Or they may hijack the entire issue, mm -hmm. like the Maldives government, who has argued that we need to relocate people from small, smaller islands of the Maldives to a few central islands because of sea level rise. Yeah. That actually is a hoax, because the Maldives government, Uma Kotari is a professor at the University of Manchester, has researched this issue, has very long plans to relocate people from small islands, because it is very costly to uh -huh. cater to those populations. And now suddenly the climate change issue is used for something completely different. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful mm -hmm. of making easy assumptions. The links between environmental change and um, migration are very complex and very indirect. And the danger is to, to play into scenarios of mass south-north south migrations that actually deny those uh, insights we have, but also deny or ignore the fact that the most vulnerable populations will not be the people moving, and mm -hmm. certainly not the people moving across borders. So these simplistic links are definitely problematic. Do you also feel that migration is being weaponized at all in this discussion around climate change? Yeah, it, it is in a way hijacked, yes. I would say, the migration issue. And uh, it is a bit unfortunate because, and it's very tricky to talk about this, and I've recently written a blog about this, and it cost me a long time because the last thing I want to do is to suggest that climate change is not an important issue. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a huge danger uh, of uh, activists using the mass migration argument because it's not empirically valid, but it also threatens to undercut their own credibility. Yeah. Because it's so evident from research that you can't make those direct links. That by playing into those fears of Im mass immigration, you not only sort of raise very dangerous sentiments, mm -hmm. but you also undermine your own long-term credibility. So I think it's very tricky and, and dangerous to use this argument. Yeah, so I think the, the big takeaway here is that really the link between migration and climate change is, is very complex and it has multiple routes through which um, we could see changes or not. And it's really important that we understand this much better and not just think have simplistic and deterministic thinking here. Thanks so much for being with me, Hein. I'll make sure to put uh, more information about this topic in the description, links also to Hein's website, to blogs he's also written on this, and others. If you like this, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.